Hello, I'm Susan Walther, Director of Patient Engagement at FARA. In this education module, I will be reviewing the inheritance of Friedrich's ataxia. For so many families, receiving a diagnosis of FA is a shock because there was no indication of the condition in the family medical history. Additionally, we all know genetics makes us who we are. However, very few of us are prepared to hear that a mutation in a single gene in our genetic makeup can cause a progressive neurodegenerative condition affecting the whole body. In a separate education module, the Frataxin gene is reviewed with specifics of the mutation types. In this module, I will provide an overview of how these mutation types are passed from parent to child and what the risks are to having additional affected children once the diagnosis of FA is known. This is a picture of a karyotype where the chromosomes have been removed from the nucleus of the cell and lined up in pairs. One copy of a chromosome is inherited from a person's mother, and the second copy is inherited from the person's father. The Human Genome Project analyzed all the genes on the chromosomes to figure out where each gene is located. The Frataxin gene is always located on chromosome 9. There are 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. Chromosomes 1 through 22 are the same in both men and women. The last pair of chromosomes determines gender. In this karyotype, there is an X and a Y chromosome, and this combination yields male gender. Two X chromosomes would yield female gender. I need to state a disclaimer here. The concepts I will be describing are the normal processes that occur in the vast majority of cell replication and inheritance. There are always exceptions to the rules. If everything worked perfectly every time, we wouldn't be talking about rare genetic conditions. Meiosis is the process of how genes on chromosomes segregate into egg and sperm prior to a child's conception. The process of meiosis is different from the process of replication of cells that takes place in our body. Replication of cells, also known as mitosis, is a process where the genes on chromosomes are exactly duplicated and separated into new cells. Essentially, one cell becomes two cells, two cells becomes four cells, four cells become eight cells, and so forth. And each cell has the complete set of paired chromosomes, like the karyotype seen in the previous slide. In meiosis, one cell becomes four cells, but each of the four cells has only one set of chromosomes, 23 instead of 46. The diagram on this slide for simple representation shows only one chromosome throughout the process of meiosis. Meiosis is an extremely important process. It is the process by which we all look different from one another while looking similar to our family members. In the beginning of meiosis, as seen in the top cell, the pairs of chromosomes duplicate. At this stage, genes can cross over, meaning the pattern of genes on the chromosomes are randomly sorted. Think of this random sorting as the numbered balls in the lottery machine. They randomly are blowing around before the chute is opened and the numbered balls line up. This random sorting for each chromosome results in each person having their own traits. Some people in a family might have brown eyes and light brown hair, while other family members might have green eyes and dark blonde hair. Expressions of genes is dependent on its inheritance pattern. The concepts of inheritance patterns can be visualized by looking at the genes for eye color. Recessive inheritance is the pattern of both variants of a gene being the same. For example, a person with blue eyes has two copies of genes for eye color that code for blue eyes. Blue eye color is represented by lowercase b here, and two lowercase b's is the genotype. The phenotype, or the expression of the genes, is blue eyes. Dominant inheritance is the pattern of one variant of a gene masking or overriding the effect of a different variant of the same gene on the other copy of the chromosome. For example, a person with brown eyes 
has at least one copy of the gene for the eye color that codes for brown eyes. Brown eye color is represented here by uppercase B, and the genotype can be two genes for brown eyes, BB, or one G for brown eyes and one gene for blue eyes, capital B, lowercase b. The gene for brown eyes overrides expression of the gene for blue eyes. If the gene for brown eyes is present, the person will have brown eyes. Here are more physical traits that have dominant and recessive inheritance. It's interesting to note that for some traits, like freckles and earlobes, it is far more common that people have two recessive genes than having a dominant gene. Most people do not have freckles on their face, and most people do have attached earlobes. Traits like eye color, freckles, hairline, and earlobes are considered normal variation, meaning these differences in traits do not cause health problems for an individual. Dominant and recessive inheritance patterns can also be applied to gene expression for physical differences where genetic variation in the gene does cause medical problems. For example, albinism, which has recessive inheritance and where affected people lack production of sufficient melatonin protein. And achondroplasia, which has dominant inheritance where affected people lack sufficient protein to make a growth factor for adequate bone formation. So all this information brings us to the inheritance pattern for Friedrich's ataxia. The inheritance pattern for FA is recessive. Let's look more closely at what recessive inheritance means for FA. Dad's chromosomes, contain a copy of the Frataxin gene without a mutation, represented by the purple color, and a copy of the Frataxin gene containing a mutation that causes Friedrich's ataxia, represented by the teal color. Mom's chromosomes contain the same Frataxin gene copies as dad. Neither mom nor dad are affected with Friedrich's ataxia, as is the typical for genetic conditions with recessive inheritance the parents are characterized as carriers for FA. Remember that meiosis forms egg and sperm with only one copy of each chromosome and therefore one copy of each gene. Inheritance of genes on chromosomes can occur randomly for each child these parents will conceive. In this example, the focus is only on inheritance of the Frataxin gene. On the right is a child colored in teal. This child has inherited two copies of the Frataxin gene with disease-causing mutations and will develop Friedrich's ataxia. There is a 25% chance for this inheritance pattern to occur. Here's the math for this occurrence. One out of two possibilities that's mom's egg has the Frataxin gene with the mutation, teal and one out of two possibilities that dad's sperm has a frataxin gene with a mutation, which is teal. So one half times one half equals one fourth or 25%. The same inheritance pattern of 25% chance can be applied to the child on the left where she did not inherit either frataxin gene with the mutation. Both of her frataxin genes do not have mutations. She will be unaffected by FA, and she is not a carrier, and she will not have a risk of having a child with FA when she is grown. The two children in the middle are carriers for Frataxin genes with a disease-causing mutation. They are like their parents, unaffected by FA. There is a 50% chance for this inheritance pattern to occur. Here's the math for this occurrence. There are one out of two possibilities that mom's egg has the Frataxin gene with the mutation, teal. Dad's sperm has the unmutated gene, purple. One half chance of teal occurring is 50% chance the child will be a carrier for mom's Frataxin mutation. The opposite could happen for dad, that there's one out of two possibilities that dad's sperm has the Frataxin gene with the mutation, 
and mom's egg has the unmutated gene in purple. So there's one half chance that there'll be the teal gene, the mutated gene for Frataxin, and a 50% chance that the child would be a carrier for dad's Frataxin mutation. Some important points to note. Recessive inheritance for Friedrich ataxia is not affected by, nor does it determine, gender of the child. The children represented in this diagram could be either gender. The 25% chance of having a child affected by Friedrich's ataxia is an occurrence risk for each individual conception. This individual risk means that if a carrier parents have two children, both children could be affected, or neither child could be affected. If carrier parents have five children, two could be affected and therefore three could be unaffected, or four could be affected and one could be unaffected. Inheritance is a random pattern. And because inheritance is random, there is nothing the carrier parents did or didn't do to cause the children to have Friedrich's ataxia. Each of us carries several genes for recessive inheritance, and unfortunately, parents often do not know they are carriers for disease until they have an affected child. The question often asked by siblings of an affected individual with Friedrich's ataxia is what are my chances to have a child affected with FA? First step is for the unaffected sibling to have genetic testing to determine carrier status. If genetic testing was performed in childhood, the test result is still valid. If genetic testing needs to be done and the sibling has a partner with whom he or she plans to have a child, the best course of action is to meet with a genetic counselor. Genetic counselors can explain inheritance risks for FA and for other recessive conditions and arrange for genetic testing. Genetic counselors will also review the family medical histories to identify other inheritance risks. Here are scenarios for a sibling's risk for having a child affected with FA. Sibling is not a carrier for FA. Risk is negligible for having a child with FA even if the partner is a carrier. Sibling is a carrier for FA. Risk is 25% for having a child with FA if partner is also a carrier. But the risk is negligible if the sibling is a carrier and the partner is not a carrier for FA. It can be complicated to understand these inheritance risks and the complication can increase if there are other inheritance risks due to family medical history and other recessive carrier risks. Please do consider meeting with a genetic counselor to help you sort out all the possible risks. What is the risk for someone who is affected with FA to have a child with FA? The answer depends on the carrier status of the person's partner. If the partner is not a carrier for FA, then all the children will be carriers for FA, but not affected. If the partner is a carrier for FA, then there is a 50% chance that a child will be affected with FA. Here's the math. Parent affected with FA always passes on a frataxin gene with a mutation. The carrier partner has one out of two possibilities of passing on the frataxin gene with the mutation, thus yielding the 50% risk. Thank you for engaging with this education module to learn about the inheritance of Friedrich's ataxia. You can continue your learning with Friedrich's ataxia by viewing other education modules on the FARA website. Please visit curefa.org backslash trial.